so hi everyone so welcome back uh, guys we are going to start new batch okay master microservices with real time project and as well as with this real time project we are including complete microservice libraries and as well as uh, docker kubernetes and aws devops tools as well like uh, jenkins so on or maven okay so how you can integrate into aws environment it is not completely jenkins i mean to say with our uh, microservices development what kind of things you need to take care as part of ci cd pipeline setup sonar test cases report code coverage report okay how you can integrate with the maven and git in the jenkins okay in the cloud environment we are going to uh, discuss as part of this our real time project development and for monitoring purpose also centralized logging like a lk stack kubernetes mini based kind of a development in local environment how you can do that and as well as aws eks cluster also we will be discussed through ca cd pipeline how you can deploy our application into the jenkins pipeline and as well as for monitoring purpose pramodias and grafana and we will be see as part of docker compose how you can handle our microservices also this is the complete course details about our master microservices then who are eligible in this course means okay a lot of people are asking i i need a real time project real time project that means when you start about real time project means you should have a knowledge on rest api crud operations without having spring boot knowledge and rest api real time project you are not eligible guys first you should complete spring boot and rest api crud operations and then the real time project you are eligible in this course even who don't know about spring boot and rest api you can enroll for the java full stack so that it will be easy for you okay so i will take all your questions after two days uh, either you can drop your email as well for all students who are facing issues here guys okay first you need to drop an email when whatever the issues you are facing uh, someone is saying on the chat box just for you guys okay so uh, here the duration of this course is 30 days it will take and e okay and as part of uh, if you any contact information to communicate with our admin team this is our email id and this is our contact number you can okay go through our youtube channel java express channel you can have a lot of videos are there for our demo videos or whatever you want here okay this is about the prerequisite for this course okay anyway i am going to demonstrate you complete real time architecture uh, how the architecture we are going to design end of the course also i will demonstrate you guys okay coming to here first we'll start from the uh, world of microservices why we need welcome uh, microservices importance what is the monolithic architecture what kind of components we have okay what are the characteristics of monolithic and then what are the disadvantages we have and then we are going to start about the okay microservices architecture i mean to say welcome to the world of microservices why it is important and then how you can develop okay building microservices business logic using framework called spring boot without spring boot there is no microservices at all so minimum basic things you should be aware about is spring boot here how we can build okay how we can right size okay how you can size our microservice boundaries how you can identify okay how you can containerize our microservices using docker okay with docker how you can convert your microservices into containerization technology okay and configuration management by using spring cloud is providing some libraries using these libraries i want to handle con centralized configuration for all your microservices for a prod dev qa how you can handle based on your requirement how you can handle in our application okay that is about configuration management and we have a service discovery and registration in a microservice architectural flow okay we have n number of services how they can locate with each other okay whether you are healthy or not how you can track it 
by using if you want to communicate between two services how you can do that this is kind of a service discovery and registration pattern where as part of the microservices spring cloud is providing one kind of a concept called eureka server and the eureka client here this is a spring cloud config server and config client as well here okay by using all these concepts i will demonstrate you a architectural diagram as well don't worry okay how you can build an edge server if anyone want to enter into your network like a, uh, anyone want to access your api via edge server is nothing but our api gateway through gateway how they can track your um, enter into your network okay via edge server while spring boot is providing one library called spring cloud gateway okay by using this library we can implement our edge server for our application and when you have multiple services if one service is down how you can handle the fault tolerance is nothing but making microservices a resiliency okay by using for resiliency 4j patterns like circuit breaker pattern or we have a retry pattern okay by using these patterns how you can make it fault tolerance for your services when you are running uh, hundreds of microservices how you can monitor monitoring of microservices using grafana and prometheus okay we can implement this grafana and prometheus using docker compose so that it will be easy for you in our local environment to our centralized logging and grafana these are all kind of a um, in the local environment we will be demonstrate you why because if you go for cloud environment to apply kubernetes advanced concepts helm charts you should be aware to avoid that part in the local environment by using docker compose by using grafana prometheus these are the things we are going to implement for all our microservices as well and before deploying our application into the cloud first we will be understanding about deploying microservices using docker compose multi container system if you use a docker you can run only one container if you are running 10 containers if you want to stop manually you need to run the command if you want to start again manually instead of that we can automate by using a docker compose how you can build okay uh, a docker images how to run in our local by using docker compose we'll discuss as well okay once you are familiar with docker compose how you can deploy into kubernetes if you know one application how you are deploying all the service configurations both are same in kubernetes also is there and how you can follow best practices techniques followed as part of here even we are going to discuss okay as part of git repo okay uh, what kind of practices you should take care while writing your code everything and dto patterns all the things we are going to discuss as part of here this real time project development here in detail course content if you see um, here we already mentioned couple of things here see we are taking one use case for real time project development and that is about a bank application and service discovery patterns okay cross cutting patterns communication between services event driven microservices centralized configuration circuit breaker centralized logging till now these are the things what we discussed as part of our course agenda here as part of here for our application how you can handle dto pattern it's very very important pattern and swagger and exception handling Okay, as part of REST API, already you should be aware this concept. So uh, that's why the minimum prerequisite for this project uh, course is uh, REST API crowd operations. Okay, and as we said, local deployment using Docker Compose, monitoring microservices, Kubernetes deploy into our Windows environment using Minikube. Okay, and then uh, Kubernetes deployment in cloud environment as well. Both. okay and jenkins ci cd pipeline integration for our microservice if you take maven integration docker sonar and kubernetes all the things will come in a single ci cd pipeline okay once you implement now okay uh, how the uh, how the jenkins pipeline will look like and by including all these concepts okay how our architecture will look like let me uh, show you right now see here if you observe in this diagram 
<clears throat> this is one we are going to implement as part of our development here. If you take here, this is a user. This is a actor. That means you. Okay. Now, this is our completely within the organization. We have our microservices. Now, if anyone want to enter into your network in the real time only via API gateway. Via API gateway is nothing but edge server is nothing but cross cutting pattern or integration pattern. Okay. Via gateway only they can communicate with our microservices here. As part of this services, if you take one application where I am choosing account microservice, card microservice, loan microservice. These three are the main independent business logics we have. Our main business logic include accounts, cards, and loans. For developing these services, for us, it will take one week of time. Okay. Even we will develop something, we will give assignment to everyone. After course completion, we'll share complete source code to everyone, guys. Don't worry. But from course day one to till day, this duration of the course, you should practice. After course completion, we'll share final source code to everyone. Remember this point. And if you see here, accounts, cards, loans, when we are running on the cloud environment, creating new database, it will be kind of a huge cost for us. To avoid that, we are using one H2 database. It is an embedded database. In the real time, we can replace with our cloud database as well, whether with your MySQL, Postgres, Oracle. But when you deploy into our Kubernetes, if you use H2 so that we can able to uh, see this architecture as part of deployment as well also. And accounts microservices own individual database. Cards microservice has own individual microservice. Loans has an individual microservice. Now, these three are three independent microservices. Once we have independent modules, if you want to communicate between our services, okay, here we have a concept called Eureka Server. Using this Eureka server, all your services, whichever services are located inside this network, you will you can able to see into this Eureka server. It is kind of a service discovery and registration pattern. And here for these services, we have called Eureka clients. Okay, and to handle your configuration management, centralized configuration. Okay, we have called GitHub. Here, we will handle our microservice common configurations or any specific requirement configurations we can handle to GitHub. To communicate with your network, we have called a config server. This is also Spring Cloud is providing one option called Cloud Config Server, Cloud Config Client. These are the cloud libraries, guys. In distributed environment, these are all for to handle your distributed challenges. These libraries are introduced here. Now, here all accounts, cards, loans behave like a Eureka client and a config client as well. Now, these two things are some patterns here. Now, coming to when you are communicating to gateway. Gateway, you hit API for the accounts. Accounts will hit for the cards. Maybe, and then from accounts, you will hit the loans as well. See, this is one arrow mark, and this is one arrow mark. If something goes wrong with the cards microservice, then how you can handle your request? I should not stop your request to give the response back. That is about here, circuit breaker came to the picture. Is nothing but fault isolation is nothing but resiliency 4j patterns here this is about a circuit breaker pattern here where you can even you can implement a retry pattern as well we have resilience 4j some couple of patterns important patterns i'm going to discuss as part of this development here now once you are doing Apart from main logics, now non-functional requirements came to the picture like now accounts will generate some logs, cards will generate some logs, loans will generate a logs. How you can able to see logging? This logging you can develop in two ways using Splunk, using ELK. 
now we are going to take example of elk now it is a open source we have a three libraries are included here in the elk stack logstash elastic search and kibana kibana is a visualization dashboard you can able to track your request into kibana dashboard here now in our windows environment in your local environment how you can configure lot of people okay failed to configure the elk why because lot of instructions are there it's not like a simple and straightforward elk integrating with our microservices here so these services will generate a log files this is one file this is second file this is third file by pulling all these logs into log stash I will forward those logs to my elastic search from there I can display my data to Kibana dashboard this is one kind of a ELK stack to handle your centralized logging system when this is about one part here centralized logging and here I want to know latency problems now gateway calling accounts accounts calling cards accounts calling loans something one service took some good amount of time maybe it is giving a low response time it is taking a lot of time how you can handle latency problems by using a jipkin i can able to know which service is taking a long time whether the service is succeeded or not you want to trace your request from gateway to till end of the microservice by using jipkin i can able to track it is kind of a finding troubleshooting problems and as well as dependency hierarchy between our services a is calling b a is calling b a is calling c a dependency graph also will generate this jipkin dashboard as well also then when you are running in the real time the main support team will responsible support team is responsible to handle okay what kind of okay services are running what are what kind of microservices are stopped i want to know tracking history each individual service how it is behaving like uh, at what time application started how much memory it is using what is the uh, average time how many threads are created okay metrics about your application by using promodinus promodius and grafana by handling these devops tools we can display our microservices data into in grafana dashboard this is some kind of a dashboard like i will show you the dashboards as well this is the overall architecture we are going to implement in this course here guys as part of the real time project development this is the architecture we are going to implement end of the course you can able to see all the components and how you can start your development as well here real time it may oh sorry uh, real time it may replace this elk with this plunk also this gateway with the commercial product like a apg or cloud gateway as well but remaining business logics eureka server config line these are all for every company i'm to say it's not mandatory to use but these are all the solutions we have a distributed challenges we can implement our architecture in this approach here this is a one the final conclusion for our microservice architecture here guys real time project once we are good about this architecture okay once we implemented complete business logics okay so and then we are see how you can monitoring dashboard microservices dashboard if you take one individual service each individual service okay at what time application started what is your cpu percentage how much heap area is using non heap area is using jvm cpu percentage how many threads are created jvm statistics the complete information you can able to see by using grafana dashboard grafana and promodius these two are the sources to implement our okay system monitor for our application this is our uh, each individual service dashboard in the real time n number of services are running identifying each one uh, it's quite difficult what are the services are running which services are down how you can handle by using another dashboard this is called customization dashboard see here 
which service is running represents as a one if service is not running it represents as a zero that means there is an issue about this some kind of microservice see here in the bottom Jipkin is zero means it is not running now here Eureka config server cards accounts gateway loans the complete dashboard you can able to see by using the Grafana dashboard here this is for the monitoring purpose here once even we are good in the in this environment okay we are integrate with our Jenkins CI CD pipeline AWS environment, how you can deploy our Kubernetes, okay? Uh, how you can create this pipeline, how you can integrate with hooks. Normally, if you do an architectural, if you developer commit something, okay, let me demonstrate you one image to you so that uh, you will get some idea. Just give me one minute, guys. I want to show some uh, flow diagram to everyone. Uh, just a minute, guys. Mm. Now, if you see here, while integrating with our AWS DevOps tools, okay, from your local machine, you will commit something on the GitHub. From the GitHub, what you will do? It will trigger a job, a Jenkins pipeline job, it will trigger. Now, by using this trigger pipeline, um, by using webhooks concept, by using this concept, you can able to, okay, uh, trigger your Jenkins job. Once the job is triggered, it needs to building your Docker image, log into the system and pushing to Docker Hub. The Docker Hub can be replaced by the private repositories as well. And alternatively, it needs to deploy our application into Kubernetes dashboard. It's kind of a orchestration engine. How you can handle the configurations inside our project, like one Docker file, one Jenkins file, okay, uh, to handle your, uh, uh, this is CI CD pipeline, to generate a Docker image, we need a Docker file, to deploy our application, we need a Kubernetes file. This is the complete architectural AWS DevOps course as part of this real-time project we included in this one as well. This is the one even we are going to implement as well. Coming to AWS flow diagram, if you observe here, see here, this is our cloud environment. AWS environment, if you take as part of our AWS, we will take few services like uh, EC2 is the main important service we will use here. How you can install your Jenkins machine, okay, into our EC2 machine. I mean to say like uh, if you take one Ubuntu, uh, how to install JDK, Maven, Docker, Kubernetes. From here, we will integrate with this Sonar as well how your sonar is running or not it's kind of a sonar dashboard you can able to see it as well also that how many uh, if you written unit test cases how many uh, test cases are uh, code coverage is done how much percentage is done okay that sonar report it is kind of a another ec2 instance as well also here and here we have a kubernetes worker nodes these worker nodes are responsible okay, to handle our deployment purpose. First, we will make a replica in our local environment. Once you are familiar within our local system, and then we'll jump into our Kubernetes dashboard as well. AWS DevOps course, people will take as a separate course this one. But as part of this course, there is no microservices involved here. So as part of main microservices, we included this topic. Here there is a public registry dashboard here. Are able to see there is a Docker Hub dashboard. Here, when pipeline is completed, the pipeline will trigger to public repo. Now, again, we will give a command to Kubernetes. Hey, run my application, Kubernetes worker node. From Docker Hub, what it will do? It will pull your Docker image and it will run into AWS environment. Anyone can access the application. Why? Because AWS will share one DNS name by using that domain name service. Anyone can access our API once your application is deployed into the cloud. Inside this Git repo, we can create four to five Git repos, like a simple Maven project, Maven with Docker, Maven, Docker with Sonar, and Maven, Docker, Sonar with Kubernetes. Four to five Git repos we can create to demonstrate with our AWS as well also. 
evening batch already this is going on uh, this is a jenkins setup is going on in the evening batch here evening batch full stack development here this is the aws basically course it will be include as well and apart from that we will be integrate with our um, react js integration i know uh, you when you learn completely ui is the question mark right not complete ui at least for your understanding level what is react js okay what is the importance of react js okay and what are the states props and how you can integrate with bootstrap how you can make rest api calls that react js integration also there in this course as well okay couple of people a question within 30 days can i complete means yes evening batch already almost done 70 percent is completed in the evening batch as well guys within that 30 days course duration okay and here if you see that deployment uh, uh like whole architectural if you see see here once you deploy your application into kubernetes see here we have a pod these are all kind of a kubernetes terminology pod service deployment replica sets how many load balancer concept how you can access your api how you can um others don't want to access your application then how you can use as a cluster ip all the differences kubernetes also uh, in detail we discuss uh, two to uh, two to three hours we'll discuss about kubernetes as well here i know if you take only kubernetes that is a different course but as part of our main full stack we are including as a additional topic here don't expect complete kubernetes complete jenkins guys developer level whichever is required those kind of topics i am taking here guys okay this is about our kubernetes deployment whole screenshot just i taken just whatever i taken this is taken in the local environment once you are comfortable now easily you can create in the cloud environment as well also same replica okay once what kind of endpoints we will develop if you take suppose config server maybe each microservice will run on a different port numbers there will start with 9000 9001 9002 like this we can take individual port numbers for each service if you take a config server centralized server how you can handle the prod configuration okay uat configuration and eureka server where it is running jipkin okay accounts microservice initial uh, three to four days the main focus is developing our business logic for the our bank use case one of the microservice as a accounts i will uh, give an assign uh, i will show you one microservice you need to practice for another microservice so that you will be familiar with your accounts cards loans i'm say bank use case anyway next session we'll discuss in detail about what kind of microservices initial development we are starting what kind of apis are available and what use case here till course end you can able to see circuit breaker refreshing promodes okay account details crowd operations swagger exception handling bean validation all the things will be involved here guys when end of this course here okay and the same way for the cards and loans and edge server api gateway now anyone want to enter into a network only via gateway only i can enter into my network called api gateway maybe it is running some port number and that port number you can access see accounts cards and loans how to fetch we will we cannot access in kubernetes also directly for the loans and cards only through gateway only i can access my application how you can set up as part of this architecture i'm demonstrating you as well and then we are building docker images first we'll go through docker commands how you can run your uh, docker container okay how you can run your mongodb database container how you can run kafka into docker container okay mysql as a docker all the things we have discussed coming to our microservices how you can build your docker image how many ways by using docker file by using google jib we have two ways we can generate our docker image as well and how you can run your microservice using docker compose how you can set up kubernetes using minikube i know minikube is a little bit 
commands different from Kubernetes. So to replace with Docker itself is providing Kubernetes for us. Single node cluster it is providing to us here, guys. By using that, how you can handle, okay? Yes, we can change our port numbers also. No problem at all. This is our uh, example purpose. Just I'm demonstrating you which port numbers are available here. Okay. Now here, how uh, even Docker desktop, whoever has an idea on the Docker, na, uh, even Docker itself is providing inbuilt Kubernetes cluster for us. How you can set up same replica in the cloud, how you will do same as it is, we can do in our local system as well. Once third step you are familiar now, then we will jump into fourth step, Kubernetes in AWS. Now, once you are good, 100%, if you get a confidence on third step, fourth step is easy. It's kind of a infrastructure setup. Basically in the real time, this infrastructure setup taken care by our DevOps team separate DevOps team, they will take based on the budget and based on how many regions required, how many, uh, how to create in all the environments, lot of things they will be included here, the setup process. To high level, I mean to say, for our Jenkins, wherever we are running our Jenkins pipeline, how you can do that also, I will be demonstrate to you as well. Now coming to our Pramod, yes, these port numbers we cannot change. Yes, we can change as yes, these are all kind of a default port numbers. Uh, Pramod, yes, Grafana, Sonar, Elastic, Kibana. These are all kind of a uh, coming to the DevOps tools only uh, for our development is completed. Then we are going to demonstrate you for this one as well also. Promodius, uh, Grafana, okay, and the Sonar report, Elastic Search, Kibana. No lot a couple of people has a question uh elastic search what it is there okay now you cannot attend uh amrita why because the evening batch already almost done so you cannot attend in the evening batch now if you see here here if you take as a uh kibana just let me demonstrate to one by one to you this is called kima explore visualize discover data this is about your kibana dashboard if you click on the images now, uh, if you go to down, I want to show you some Kibana logs here. Uh, uh, yes, not like that. Let me, yeah. Uh, I'm not pulling the screenshot actually last time. Yeah, I supposed to take a screenshot so that it will be easy for you. Uh, yeah, now see here. If you take our centralized logging here, at what time application is error, what request you made, this is kind of a Kibana dashboard. Kibana is also a kind of a separate course, but as part of our logging purpose, centralized logging dashboard, uh, we can implement also. This is kind of a dashboards you can create with our Kibana dashboard as well also here, guys. This kind of a graph diagrams who done specifically course and certifications now nah? for them they will aware about this complete picture how you can design these graph diagrams but um, setup process is quite complex here so if you are familiar with the complex operations now nah, then easily you can learn by yourself see logging system at what time what is the source? This is complete your logging purpose. This is the um, discover, iterate, and resolve with. They have their own query language uh, to run our uh, logs to find out here. Okay. Now, this is about Kibana. If you take about a ELK stack like this. Okay. Now, see here. See. Meet the search platform that help you search, solve, and succeed. Now, did you see Elasticsearch, Kibana, and integrations? There is a log stash we have, and we have a beats we have. This is kind of a uh, this how we can integrate. This is basically supporting the cloud as well. This is based on the pricing here, guys. If you go for the pricing, it will go for the cost uh, for this one. Uh, this is for the logging data. See logs you can able to in this dashboard here. Okay, and coming to another one called uh, Jipkin. 
re, uh, whatever Jipkin is doing, that it will do ELK as well. But right now, for our local environment purpose to identify uh, a tracing part of request, even we are taking real time, we may not use. Still, maybe uh, startup companies, they may use as well. See, here, if you make an API call, the API is communicating what are the microservices here. How much time it is to, uh, taking right hand side times microseconds or milliseconds or seconds, you can tr uh, troubleshoot your latency problems by using Jipkin. It is kind of a distributed tracing system. Okay, this is just also we can integrate as well. Okay. It's not theoretical, it's completely real time, correct? And we'll cover my, whatever we are every day we are introducing now, everything will cover interview questions as well, guys. Like how interview questions, not direct questions, guys. They will ask you a simple uh, one answer. They will say, um, hey, Manish, uh, you have n number of services are running, right? One service is down. How you will handle the request? The question, indirect question, there is no direct question in interview, especially for microservices, guys. No one will ask you what is difference between monolithic versus microservice, what is Eureka server. No one will ask you interview question in this approach, guys. If you are attending Java full stack, if you are attending Java backend developer, they will ask you scenario-based interview questions. All the things will be covered as part of our complete course. Even we will share you an interview guide as well, guys. Don't worry. End of the course. Material also will share with you. Okay. And this is the Jipkin dashboard. And if you see here, this is some kind of a graphical representation. In the right hand side, see, uh, there is some uh, couple of services are displaying here. Now, this is the graph how you can generate this graph by integrating with the Jipkin as well also here. This is the complete overview picture for our real-time course development here, guys. While integrating our pipeline, this architectural diagram, our REST API endpoints, okay, and then monitoring dashboard and uh, Prometheus dashboard, and then Kubernetes deployment and Jenkins. This is the one, almost this 25 to 35 days course duration. Okay, we are going to implement this a complete picture here. It may extend maybe two, three more days more also, but we can able to complete 100% sure here, guys. Okay, the duration is set 25 to 35 days. The minimum thing you should know Spring Boot and REST API, guys. If you don't know, you will not understand our microservices develop. First, try to complete. Even we have a Spring Boot and REST API videos of with our Java full stack. Check with our admin team. So this is our uh, contact number for our admin team who are not taken this course. So this is our email ID. You can drop an email. You can ping in a WhatsApp also here for enrollment uh, who are new students are joined for them. Already enrolled, no worries. Everything will be covered for you guys as part of your Java full stack development. So this is the course, total course here, guys. Any questions? Okay, security is as a separate course. We cannot include for if you if you take our spring security as a separate course now, we will integrate how you can integrate security for microservices as well, like JWT, what to basic, JDBC, LDAP, role-based access control, method level security, all the things will be covered. That is as a separate course or uh, spring security, the check with admin team. Uh, if you join our official telegram group now you will get to know all the details as well uh, so this is our youtube link guys today's session will upload it in the youtube itself today and tomorrow as well you can use same meeting details for tomorrow tomorrow we'll start with um, about monolithic microservices advantages components characteristics that i'm going to discuss in the tomorrow session agenda guys if you see here this is our agenda for the tomorrow monolithic architectural understanding what kind of characteristics we have what are the components of monolithic what are the disadvantages and then we jump into microservices what kind of challenges we have what kind of components difference between monolithic versus microservices and then we'll start our development here first straight away we'll start with our uh, microservices development and use case as well 
yes you will get recorded sessions how else how you will cover that just check with our admin team they will help you already you will get an email uh, if you are already joined in this meeting miss definitely you will get one email if not wait for today by today's session you will get one more email with complete details guys okay so that's all today's session and we'll catch up same time tomorrow uh, with same meeting details tomorrow is the last day for the demo session two days only demo sessions guys for microservices why because i don't want to waste the time uh, to gain more and like this so better if you are interested really in this course miss please go ahead and enroll by today itself guys even seats are not like a uh, limited only not for everyone why because once two days is completed now we'll start our real development everything guys but this is the complete course content okay so that's all today's session Thank you guys. We'll catch up same time tomorrow then. Bye-bye.